All right, welcome to another episode from The Chart Reader. So we are taking a look at the weed sector and look, I've been really bullish on the weed sector the last few videos. And truth be told, I'm not necessarily like sad or bearish or anything like that, but the overall market has me worried. And I always say it, there's no set of stocks, there's no sector that's stronger than the overall indices, all right? So I'll talk about that, but generally, I wouldn't be scared right here, all right? Yeah, this was a really bad big red candle and you know, it, things happen. I always say it, there are healthy red candles in a good uptrend. I'm a little extra worried because I'll flash them again later, right? But this is the DJ30, all right? We're under the eight, we're hitting the 20. This is the SP500 right there. We're actually under the eight and the 20. You know what? I'm not gonna show NASDAQ because again, this is these are just plants in the dirt, right? This has nothing to do with um, technology in any way, right? But overall, my, my concern just becomes the markets are turning and, and I don't know if moving averages are gonna hold here if they can't there, okay? Um, CGC is the next one I'm gonna cover. Man, it was close. I actually thought it was gonna make a really big run. I think, again, the issue was the market. And then, honestly, I don't know what Sandal and um, High Tide look like. I think I saw a decent day on Sandal, SNDL, early in the week, but I just don't know where it closed on Friday, actually. But overall, this is gonna be a little bit of a rough one, and I think it's less about the weed sector itself and more with just what I think the market is right now. You know what I mean? So before we go any further though, what are we gonna to do today? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we're done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to the channel, share this video on the internet, comment good or bad. Look, anything you can do helps me so, so much. But for real, just being here and giving me your time is super, super appreciated, right? And hey, honestly, if you can share this thing, it actually does me the best because I am not that good at that, all right? But look, let's get into it and until Ray, all right? I, I, I talked about this day a lot, all right? When you gap up, and continue, man, the amount of strength that shows is is almost, almost un, unmatched, all right? It definitely happened in a little bit of a gap fill, and I don't even think this ran green, 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 green because of this red, 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 I don't. This was market gap up reaction and follow through, all right? And the one chart I kept flashing was Palantir. That's what this was. That also went horizontal just like Tilly did, and then it took off, right? Like that, like, Tilray seemingly is setting up the same way, goes up, goes horizontal, should blow up and go, right? My concern, again, if you jumped forward, I'm showing this again, right? But look, this is what the Dow Jones looks like. The Dow Jones right here was flying, all right? And really quickly, let's look at Palantir. All this happens May 8th onward, right? So just remember May 8th, all right? May is back here and we're still horizontal, let alone the beginning of the up here, all right? Let's take a look at the SP500. This one lines up a little more, right? This is the May 8th timing and take off, right? So Palantir does it at the best time, gap up and go. Unfortunately, Tilray did it right here, right? Again, go back to the DJ30. Tilray did the gap up right here, right? Again, let's actually go to Tilray. Tilray, all right, maybe not necessarily this close. It was only here. It definitely wasn't here, right? Like the problem just sadly is, again, I'm telling you, any other market condition, any other just, just and look, I might be wrong. All right, like I'm not, I am not always right. In fact, there are some really good traders in the comments actually saying they disagree with me. And, and I love that, right? I think those kind of like educated dialogues back and forth, it's not about who's gonna be right, me or you, me and him, me or her, none of that, right? It's really more, 
all right, here are my educated opinions. No, 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 I disagree. Here are my educated opinions. Okay, cool. One of us is gonna learn something, put it in the back pocket. One of us is gonna like reassure the confidence, put it in the back pocket. Both of us become better tomorrow. And when I say both of us, I mean all of us, right? Like it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. But my sincere my, my hesitation and worry has less to do with Tilray, has less to do with CGC, has less to do with, I'm assuming Sandal and High Tide, SNDL and High Tide are not doing well. I really am assuming it. But the market, when, when the NASDAQ is bad, tech will do poorly. It just, it is what it is. When the Dow Jones and the, and the S&P 500, I think especially when the Dow Jones starts to do poorly, these like basic brick, dude, again, there, this is nothing. These weed stocks, in my honest opinion, are equivalent to bank stocks. These are nothing more than stores. These are physical stores where people go in, give money and go out with a product, right? Like it's like the bank, you go in with money, you go to a physical location. Yeah, there's a little bit more online, this and that, but dude, end of the day, it's all about the vault and how much they got in it, right? Like you go into the bank and do your thing. And let's even take another step back. Like all we're talking about is farming here, right? Like people are farming some green things that instead of eating, we smoke and you know other things like that right but dude if if dow jones and s p 500 are not doing well no gap up and validation no gap up and confirmation is going to do it i'm telling you any other moment this is where you bounce off the eight and fly and i promise you if i'm wrong i'm not going to get sad all right, maybe I'm not gonna catch the morning pop, maybe after hours it runs, maybe one of the really important earnings that's coming out on Monday or Tuesday does really, really well and changes everything. Dude, it's all good, baby, I'll get in too. Like, I don't need all the money from the trade, I just need a lot of it, right? Like, you get what I'm saying, right? So, I, again, at one point, this was my largest holding. I sold a lot, I really, really did, and hey, actually, knock on wood, I banked most of that. Yeah, I definitely didn't bank all the way up here, right? Because clearly we're down here. But hey, I took at least almost every single penny. Actually, I did, I think. Because I believe I got stopped out on the eight moving average. I don't think I, I did my stop loss at the bottom of this. Maybe, I, I honestly, again, I don't remember, right? Like I just, I put the numbers and I move on. But I either put my stop loss at the bottom of this 731 candle or I did it at the eight moving average. And what I probably did was it was here the day before, right? I kind of did a guess of where it was gonna go. I gotta believe that this went a little bit sharper. I don't know, maybe I did do it here. Cause I don't think I would have guessed it would have kept going up that hard. I don't know. Again, sorry, right? I'm talking a little too much personal stuff, but yeah, is what it is. Any other day, I'm gonna say it one more time. This would have just blown up just like Palantir did. Up, horizontal, hit the line, hold the line, run the line, right? I don't think Tilray sees that. And again, it's less because of Tilray and it's more because DJ30. Under the eight, pretty badly. I don't know if we're holding it. That's a scary MACD. That's a scary RSI. That's some significantly different volume from here right here. And we've seen a couple reds in a row do some pretty hard things. And this was a pretty hard thing. And truth be told, I don't know if we're going to come all the way down here. I think we're coming back to at least there. You know, that's a decent plateau. And it's not even that strong a plateau. We'll see. We'll see. But um, And then again, SPX is actually under this loses it this is doji that confirms i think we're coming to 444 you know what i mean so maybe 44 5 or like 44 2 i think at that point it's just wherever the 50 ends up moving up right but um tilray it's sad right i'll show the weekly and i just want to say i think this is a deceptive weekly because again any other moment in market strength, this right here says I want to come to five. This right here is actually why I went really big. I actually thought we were going to finally smash the 50 and I actually thought it was going to smash it by a lot and run because we've all said it in the comments, weed stocks will get a lot of volume the moment there's reason for it, right? Like there's, there's no disagreeing from me on that. 
And yeah, if it broke the 50, dude, if it touched three, it was going to fly to five in my opinion. But I think this is a deceptive weekly. I don't think that this is a, a healthy MACD or RSI or volume because, again, I think Monday goes down. I do. So, um, again, I might be wrong. I will definitely buy back in if I'm wrong. But I have a real healthy amount of skepticism about the market specifically, less about these. But, hey, again, none of these are, are better than the market. All right. Let's come into CGC. All right. And I think CGC goes Man, just this is sad. All right. There's there's a few technical things I'll talk about, but man, this is sad. Okay. First and foremost, we're going to talk about this day and the day after. So 728. 728 candle obviously break. Like, that's a break. That's a really, really strong get over the 20 moving average candle right there, right? That's actually obviously better than that because that one only barely gets over it versus this one that's like it's it's in the halfway body. All right. This next day is not a good day, all right? Look at the box over there. This day opens at 0.53 and then falls all the way down to 0.49. I know it only looks like a few cents. That's actually a 10% loss. Is it actually five cents? Just under, it's four cents, right? So, dude, that's an 8% loss easy, right? Like, more people, in my honest opinion, lost money that day than anything. And this is not a good con. Like there are good, good days and there are bad, good days. And that's sadly what this was. This is not confirmation. You can see the follow up from there. This right here was a decent day, breaks two moving averages on a single one. Unfortunately, that's not good confirmation, you know? And I think again, I don't know if I'm not gonna repeat it to the extreme that I did on the last one, but look, SP500, right? SPX, SP500 is under the eight and the 20. I always say Say, good things happen over them, bad things happen under, right? And hey, I'm not here calling a crash, but I think we're going to do here. We're, we we hit basically, we hit basically, and we actually never do on any of these three. I think we're now due to at least hit it. I do not think we're going to lose it unless the technicals start getting really silly, silly and scary, right? But I think that one's going down there. I don't think this one falls as hard. I think we come here for sure though. And again, when the Dow Jones and the SP 500 are not doing well, you can't expect weed stocks to do well. And again, break, like this was close. This breaks. This was close. This tries. Like this would have gone. This would have ran any other market condition. Because like I said, Tilray was ready to copycat Palantir. It just, it really was. I don't think the, and hey, I might be wrong. I'm not here saying for sure I'm right that the market's not looking good, but I don't like that that SP500 or Dow Jones. It has me worried, all right? It does, and, and I can't sit here pretend that it doesn't, all right? So, um, yeah, this is sad, but again, this is this is how you gotta like move your money, right? Like, it, it's a lot, it, how do I say this? It's not always just about where your money is. You have to look at some like auxiliary things too. Sometimes you got like, let's say my money was 100% in CGC, like this was the only weed stock I had. You better believe I'm looking at Tilray. You know what I mean? Like if Tilray's doing bad, I can't expect this to do well. But if Tilray does good, there's probably a good chance that this one might do better because this one hasn't run like that one. And you know what I mean? Like there's sympathy plays and things like that. It's like the EV stocks. If you're playing a Lucid, if you're playing a Nikola, if you're playing a Rivion, you better be looking at Tesla. You know what I mean? So just again, and then from there, you better be looking at the majors like I just did here, right? So um, again, this is less about my concern about the weed sector and CGC itself. This is just a reminder that, you know, you gotta bow to the king and 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 the king is the markets all right so cgc look i'm not going to talk about the weekly much all right this is actually a really bad weekly because we were talking about breaking the eight and running up here red 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 green 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 we actually are now below the eight friday said no 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry and again i it, it is nothing more than an i'm sorry like any other market condition this would have been a way better outcome all right SNDL, let's come to SNDL. Damn, I remember, I swear, I remember seeing this. My money was really tied up. Otherwise, dude, this is like, 
this isn't even a fake out. The word is not fake out, okay? Because again, this is technical analysis 101 in a lot of ways. And you know I'm not here to say that this is perfect, that this is like the 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 guaranteed way of seeing things. I'm I've literally said on this video I might be wrong like five times, right? Like there there is no guarantee, but man, when you can break the hundred and confirm and your confirm it, look at the box over there. The high of the day was 167. The close of the day was literally the entire, like, dude, the strength of this candle screams, I want to come up to the 200. Like I, like, I realize that this line's here and this candle didn't cross the line. No, nah, my line isn't that good. I prom like this candle, if I had free money, I would have bought right here. I might have even averaged up at the end of the day expecting to come here and I would I would have been really sad the next like this is not a fake out at all and like if you bought here and like are sitting down here I actually don't want like obviously you should be sad no one wants to lose money but like ah look at the MACD the RSI the like there was so much good right here again the issue simply was if you fast forward it that's when the Dow Jones started to slip. That's actually when the SP 500 started to slip. I haven't shown it the entire video, but yeah, that's when NASDAQ actually started to slip. Like when the majors aren't doing good, no four letter ticker is gonna do better. And what's even worse is when they're starting to do bad, the bad market is strong enough to just turn it all away and go. I'm telling you, the word is not a fake out here. This was a technically strong candle behind a technically strong MACD, behind a technically strong RSI, behind a really nice little increase in volume on two days, followed by a really decent, solid consistency over what, three, six, seven days? Like, oh my God, everything was saying. I even believe that my better indicators that I call the one would have said, let's go right like the only reason i honestly didn't buy is i had a lot of money in other stocks you know what i mean but this is sad and more than anything it's it, it's a reminder to 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 respect the king and and respect the queen and that is the majors you know what i mean so um yeah at this point if the majors don't hold honestly like i i've been i've been bearish there's no other word right and one last time i'm less bearish about the sector hopefully when things recover these will recover all right but yeah it's just it's bad timing that this all happened again i think this is a deceptive weekly and in a lot of ways it actually might not even be because this was a good candle and sadly this wasn't a great follow-through right so um yeah again just just ah this is a really sad day and the biggest learning from this one honestly is look at the auxiliary information around you. Just because you're a big SNDL holder doesn't mean you can't look anywhere else. You got to remember that, all right? The last one, hi Ty. Last one we'll look at is right here. Damn. Ah, that's sad. We're now under all five moving averages. You see that, right? Sorry for zooming in and out. That That's a hard, hard cluster of four. And look what's happened too. This is what happens when you get that hard cluster of four. You oscillate up, oscillate down, oscillate up, oscillate down, oscillate up, oscillate down. You know what I mean? And volume is low. Volume's actually well below 100K. Volume, just look at that. The average at one point, not that long ago. I guess that was pretty long ago, but dude, it wasn't even in the millions, right? But it was in the 300Ks. We're now, I mean, yeah, look at it. We're in the, like, we've lost 50% average volume in, in roughly eight months, nine months. That's not a good thing here, right? The interest is going away. Um, horizontal look horizontal is better than down but if you're gonna put your money in a stock that's going horizontal dude just put it in the bank right like it's a mean joke to say but it's true you know what i mean so um and and look this stock has gone horizontal for months on months on months on months it's fortunately gone up but then it kind of comes back and then you know what i mean right but this actually from here to here, it's all it's basically mimic this and it's a little bit more downtrendy, right, than it is horizontal, but at least it was horizontal, came down, and it's kind of going a little, like, end of the day, look, I'm not touching high tide until this gets over the 200. 
you can argue if it can get over the 100 right here at 127, it could be worth the ride up there. That looks like about a 10% swing, right? You're adding about 12 cents. That'll take you that 140 almost. It's all about breaking the above all and fly. Right now, we're below all and ready to die. So 107 seems a lot more realistic than 154 still, you know what I mean? On top of the fact that the other three have me worried, just it is what it is, right? So you know I'm not here to scare or anything like that, but just my thoughts and opinions, let me know what you think. Otherwise, hey, thank you, thank you.